Hey, Tommy. Hey, Kevin. What are you working on? Well, I actually brought a bunch of my hand planes to show you the differences, what they're used for, and how to use them correctly. Perfect, because it is a great tool to have on hand. You know, if you've got a door that is sticking, maybe it's been painted too much or it's swollen, and you want to knock off the edge, this is the perfect tool. Perfect for that. You know what? I replaced a piece of trim recently, and instead of pulling out the router to knock off the edge, a couple uh, passes with my plane and I was all done. Easing the edge is perfect for a plane too. All right, so walk me through, what have you brought? All right, let's start right here. These are actually called bench planes. They're different sizes. Mm -hmm. All right, it's actually a two-handed tool yep. and it's primarily meant to shave or plane with the grain. Yeah. All right. Now it's great for smoothing surfaces or truing up edges. So you've got a rough sawn board right here and you want to flatten this out? Now if I wanted to flatten this out, take out some of the dips and smooth it out, I would use a plane. So I'm going to take this plane right here and I'm just going to go right down the board. I'm just going to take out the high spots. And generally, uh, with a bench plane, you're removing lots of material, right? Right, and that's adjustable right here. I can pull the knife up to cut off less. Okay, now you have showed us two different sizes right here. You grabbed a bigger one. Why are you grabbing bigger versus smaller? Well, think about it. The shorter the plane, the more it will follow the bumps and valleys in the board. Ah, All right. Okay. If I want to true up an edge, let's say I want to make a door and I need to make a real tight joint, I would choose a plane that's even longer than this one because I want that edge to be nice and straight. I want to true off the mountains. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Now, I don't actually do a lot of furniture work, so I don't use bench planes that much. Mm -hmm. um, and I noticed some other ones that you have here, sort of specialty planes. I don't use these a lot either. Walk us through this. All right. This plane, if you look at this plane at the bottom here, the blade comes all the way out to the edge, unlike this plane right here. So, in fact, this blade is going to cut the same width of this shoe right here, where this one's going to cut a little less? Right. Now, this is a great plane for truing up a mortise and tenon joint, for example, where you wanted to get tight against the, the tenon nice. and true it up nice. Here's another one right here. This is actually another plane where the blade comes all the way out, a shouldering plane, or also known as a rabbiting plane. Yep. It goes tight against the joint of a casing or a jam, and you wanted to true it up nice, you can actually move this blade forward to get right down to the bottom when yeah. you get down to the bottom of the jam or right up the top at the head and nice. less chisel work. Never even seen one of those before, that's good to know. Now this right here is probably the plane that I use most of the time. I keep it in my pouch, it's a great everyday plane. I use it for truing up just about any kind of edge, like sidewall shingles, uh, the edge of this board right here, if I wanted to chamfer the edge, flatten the edge, or even flatten the surface of a board. I could do it real quick on a small yeah. piece of wood. And it literally fits in your hand like a sanding block, which, I don't know, maybe that's where the name comes from, but they call them block planes. Block plane because it's a one-handed tool. Yep. Now, I use mine a lot, um, as you do, and I'll be honest with you, uh, sometimes it's fighting me, yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm well. either getting tear out or it's grabbing, um, and I just feel like I'm not getting as much out of the plane as I think I could. Well, it's important that you have the plane adjusted right, so if the blade is out too far, it's not going to uh, cut right. There's a couple of adjustments right here. This is the tension that allows the blade to slide in and out, and this adjusts the blade in and out. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do first is see if this is sharp. So I'm going to take the blade right out and look at it. Looks like a chisel. Yep. All right. Now the first thing I like to do is I like to rest it on my thumbnail and see if it slides off. If it slides off, see, it could use a little fine tuning. Really? Okay. So what I do is I take a sharpening stone like this, coarse on one side, smooth on the other. I use a few drops of oil, put it on here. Now, the key is making sure that the angle stays the same. Right. All right. That's the angle that I want to create. So I want to go around honing it in a circle, keeping it flat a few times. Because you don't really want to change the angle of that bevel it's at all. It's very important that I don't change the angle. Right. So now that I've gone around a few times like that, I want to take the burr that I've created on this side, flip it over, and go around like that. Okay. Now I'm on my coarse side, I'll flip it back one more time. Over here. Do you do this frequently, Tommy, or once you sharpen it, does it last you, what, six months, a year? Or? No, it depends on what I'm cutting. So now what I'm doing is flip it over. It depends on what you're cutting and how aggressive you're cutting. Yep, so you've just flipped it over to the fine side? Fine side. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to work it around, keeping it tight. All right, bring it around this way, flat. Now, 
I'm just about done, but before I finish, I pick this up ever so slight, and I just go around two or three times, and now I'm done. All right, so let me get the oil off, and then I'll show you how I tell if it's sharp. I let the weight of the blade rest on my thumbnail, mm. and if it doesn't fall off, it's a sharp blade. All right, so sharp blade, and that's gonna make a big difference, but right. technique matters too. Technique absolutely matters. So when you're planing with the grain. Which you really always wanna do if you can. Exactly, because if you don't, you can get tear off. But there's one other thing that I always like to look at. See how this grain starts here and watch how it rises to the edge over here. Mm -hmm. I always like to plane in the direction that it rises. Really? So if I turn around and plane into it, I could also get chip out a tear out there also. Okay, so it come with this rise and with the grain. Right. Never heard that one before. Now, there's another adjustment that can be made to help against tear out. Right here on the nose of this plane, there's an adjustment that I can actually open that mouth of the blade up. So as you move that piece of See steel that? forward, this dimension right here opens. That's right. So if I close it, bring it tighter or closer to the blade, the less the chance of tear out. Right, but you don't want to go too close because you do need some room for those shavings that yeah. actually pass through. If it's tight, they can't come through. Right. Okay, Tommy, I got one for you. We got a shutter, um, so we've got styles and rails. You can have the same configuration on a door, yeah. but because you've got styles and rails, it means that if you're gonna plane with the grain here, mm -hmm. you're ultimately gonna end up hitting end grain. And that's always a tricky spot. Absolutely, because you could have end grain on both sides of the shutter. Mm -hmm. So first of all, what I like to do is I like to start right here and walk myself into the center of the shutter, right like that. Now I'm going across the end grain, I'm getting a nice cut. But watch what happens when I go over the end grain on this side of the shutter. Ugh, look at that. All right, it break out. That's right. terrible. So there's a couple of ways to prevent that. I could have just started here and gone this far mm -hmm. and stopped and returned right here, okay? Problem solved. Another way to do it is if I want to come all the way across in one pass, I could clamp a small piece of wood right here about a 64th of an inch down. Now when I plane it, I'm gonna tear off this edge and not this edge. Leaving this edge nice and clean, just the way we want it. Exactly. That's a good tip, Tommy. In fact, <laughs> lots of great tips, thanks. You're welcome.